Okay, everybody. We're going to have our last talk of the day from Ian here. But before he starts, um, I was asked to make a short announcement. Sebastian posted on the announcement forums a list of possible topics for the hackathon on Sunday. So please go check that out and either vote on it or contribute to it uh, so that Sunday will be fruitful if you're participating. And even if you're not participating, you have power over what the participating people do that day. So um, without further ado, Ian will take the stage. It'll be our last talk of the day. And then I'll say a short goodbye. And you're welcome to stay as long as you want. Excellent. So is the mic on? Excellent. Wow. Last talk on day one. Somehow, I feel like I pulled the short straw here. Uh, that's probably the only scripted part of this talk. I actually prepared a small note uh, of uh, possible outcomes on uh, Kai's talk, uh, some of which should include, I don't know about you, but I nearly fell asleep. Let me be the first to say, yeah, Kai, it's been a pleasure collaborating with you. You'll be sorely missed. Let me be the first to welcome Kai onto Team GDC. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now that you've woken up a bit, um, I, I'm start with a, this is a bit of a personal talk for me. I mean, I, I could go in the very, very deep uh, underlay of it, but um, I want to start on, on a very personal note, just to try and engage you. Um, I have a confession to make. Uh, this is actually quoted from uh, somebody in this room. Uh, he used it at a previous conference. Uh, I'm going to shamefully use it anyway. Uh, but my confession is this. I don't really want to be here. Now, before you say anything, uh, yes, Andre did use that at a C++ conference. Uh, but I, when I say it, I actually mean it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not saying anything bad about Andre. I mean, yeah, yeah, but the thing is, when he stands on stage, you know, he's a character. You know, he, he really resonates. You know, he, he's a Matt LeBlanc of Romania. Um, <laughs> whereas me, I've got the stage presence of a turnip. And <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I didn't even ask to be here. You know, uh, my whole uh, being in this, uh, you know, giving a talk here, you know, Andre sort of came to me about uh, a month, two months ago. Uh, and he sort of said, you know, Ian. I don't know why he's whispering. You know, he's my internal monologue. Um, <laughs> but we say, you know, hey, Ian, you know, did, did you actually uh, submit a talk? I, I didn't quite see it, as if I did. Um, and I said, well, no, not really. I mean, I, I was thinking about actually submitting a lightning talk. Um, and he, sort of, you know, he said, OK, well, uh, here's the thing. You know, we, we've got a great turnout, um, but we're kind of lacking on speakers. You know, how, how do you feel like talking for an hour? And I said, no, I don't want to talk for an hour, let alone at all. Um, <laughs> and you know, some back and forth went along, you know, and we sort of agreed on 30 minutes. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, so and uh, as soon as I was asking us, yeah, so how's the family doing? Said, okay, got to hop on a plane, bye, and uh, just leave me right there. So a month with no slides and no talk, um, <laughs> trying to think of what to do. So, but anyway, I realized that it's been quite some time since I uh, actually last gave, gave a talk at DCOM. This was in uh, 2004, um, 2004, 2014, <laughs> 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 as if. Um, and yeah, quite a lot has happened since then. Um, but I'd like to sort of try and keep on the sort of abstract layer of that. I mean, you know, I could give another talk on uh, compilers, but to be honest, I might as well just explain to you how this works. Uh, yeah. And yeah, as far as people are concerned, uh, things that sort of deal with the sort of low down tool chain, um, you know, they should just work. You, know, you, you don't really care how it works. So long as it does its job, that's it. Um, so let me just give a start fr from the bottom up. So uh, binary utilities. Now, uh, this is sort of one of the things that I've been working on. I uh, talked about this in 2014. Uh, nothing too interesting to say about binary utilities itself, 
but uh, of what support we do have in D is the, the ability to uh, recognize and demangle symbols. Um, this feature was added in 2014, uh, and what this enabled was that you can uh, use uh, demangling, uh, demangling uh, in a wide variety of applications uh, provided by uh, bin utils. Um, what's happened since? Well, nothing too much really. Uh, after the first iteration, it was discovered that there was uh, various problems with portability, uh, mostly Solaris 9. Who would have thought not everybody has uh, string to long double? Uh, again, uh, a year later, actually this was the same guy who came up to me. I mean, I don't know what's happened in between the time. You know, first he tried to build it, then I think he tried to run the test suite. What he did in between that time... Uh, but yeah, it turns out that Solaris 9 doesn't even uh, support hexadecimal symbols. Uh, so yeah, we have to remove that, and now when we uh, print the demangle screen, it's just hexadecimal uh, throughout. Um, but ever since then, it's really just been very, very um, little additive changes, um, mostly just as and when the feature has been added to the, the DD programming language. Um, Currently, uh, I've been working with uh, Rainer. Where's Rainer? Over there. Uh, so he's doing some excellent work, uh, actually trying to define the DABI. Um, and I've been sort of taking on board that work and implementing it into the demangler itself. Uh, you know, I, I sort of uh, ran into various problems, and after sort of giving some input, I've uh, finally got this quote from him, where he says, yeah, I've updated the grammar not to need special token uh, qualified function type, I believe that is. Uh, this now reveals the conflict for V and another one on M. Um, yeah. Well done. Yeah. Someone has managed to independently verify what I've been saying for three years, uh, that the uh, manual API is not as context-free as we would hope it to be. Um, as well as that, he has been working on uh, back references within uh, demangling. I don't know how far you've got with that. Uh, last time I checked on the PR, it kind of seemed like it stalled for a couple of things. Uh, but that will be sort of a major change, and um, I'll just be making sure that we will be sort of in sync for when that goes in. Um, and also, we'll be looking to supporting uh, multiple format styles. Uh, so, you know, uh, print the demangled sim with and without parameters, with or without a type, uh, with or without attributes. Uh, this should open up uh, quite a lot uh, in terms of future work on above the stack. And finally, uh, this would probably looks like it's going to be incorporated into core.demangle. Uh, for those who've actually uh, tried to use DD Mangle and uh, discovered that it doesn't really work with about 10% of the symbols, um, this is practically feature complete as far as I'm concerned. Uh, when I last uh, ran, well, as I say, a test suite, you know, I basically uh, compiled the Phobos unit tester, um, dumped all the symbols, passed it through the demangler. Uh, it was not able to handle 140 of those um, 300,000 uh, symbols, and they all look correct, at least at, at a glance. So uh, hopefully in the future you'll have a lot uh, much better um, D runtime capabilities. Uh, next, GDB. Uh, again, I talked about GDB in 2014. Um, however, first I want to on a kind of like a, a market sales approach first. So uh, GDB itself. Um, it's a very intuitive tool. It's not easy to learn, uh, but, but it's very intuitive once you know its ins and outs. Um, however, you kind of got this like a very... Uh, it's like a 1970s interface. You know, it's not the most uh, friendly to look at. Um, uh, however, there's a, a not very well-known feature. If you press uh, Control x Control a uh, in GDB, you uh, come up with uh, a nice TUI interface. Um, and you can sort of switch to show assembler and, and whatnot. Uh, however, uh, and this is the, the real marketing pitch I'm trying here, uh, you know, now you're in the 80s, uh, you know, why use this at all? Um, you know, why not use instead uh, Color GDB? Um, which, you know, oh, excellent, we got color here. Now we're in the 90s, uh, CLI. <laughs> 
Uh, but the fact that I implemented the color syntax highlighting and use it on a daily basis has nothing to do with my endorsing it. Uh, so anyway, uh, at this talk, mm, uh, so one second, I'm just going to do it on the throat. So. So what work have I actually done uh, in GDB? Well, to start off with, um, I sort of gave a revamp in the uh, implementation of it. Uh, so mostly just sort of simple things, you know, make sure that GDB is aware of main, uh, primitive types, and hooked in the demanding capabilities as before. And uh, in February I, 2014, I actually added a expression parser in GDB as well, uh, where the uh, grammar of expressions matches identically uh, to the D grammar. Um, and, and so that sort of opened up a, a, smoothful, th a smoothful things. Uh, there are some things missing, such as uh, some primary expressions, and it doesn't recognize all types either. It's just very basic ones, so uh, but primitive types, uh, arrays, and pointers. Uh, but it's also able to uh, pass integers and floating points and recognize lit literals as well. Um, uh, since I gave that talk in 2014, uh, it's been added the capability to uh, look up non-local symbols. Uh, this is a feature that uh, anyone can use so long as the compiler omits uh, these two tags. Uh, one is for imported modules, the other is for imported declarations. Uh, DMD doesn't at this point in time. I'm not sure about LDC. Uh, how good are you with uh, debugging, or at least printing debugging symbols? I, I, I've got her, and that's it. <laughs> Not at all, so, yeah. Uh, and uh, another thing I did was to, not particularly interesting, but I switched to uh, eager resolving of symbols. Uh, the only useful thing that this really uh, affects people is that uh, when you've got alternating dots and identifier symbols, to actually work out what it is before you pass it to the grammar. This opened up um, a lot of functionality within the grammar itself, and I was able to add uh, some, uh, some property expressions like uh, dot size of uh, without getting shift reduce conflicts. Uh, but since then, all I've really been doing is just sort of fixing various bugs. Um, nothing much to it. Uh, now, if you sort of uh, cast your mind back to 2014, and actually what I talked about, um, you probably think that some of that is a little bit missing. Um, and I, never, I didn't actually sort of realize this until uh, I was sort of talking to a colleague, and he just sort of you know, pasted me this, and let us try and work out what he's doing. So he's you know, printing a URL, um, he's trying to uh, index the URL and getting invalid binary operations specified, he's trying to dereference the URL uh, and get structure has no component named operator star, uh, he's trying to dereference the pointer to URL and gets internal this. <laughs> this is not an aggregate. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what this is doing here, uh, but he seems to then print the type, no, there is no this, and then he's trying to take the slice of it, where he gets a handy response, can't take the slice of a non-array. Um, okay, uh, at least uh, taking an index and taking a slice of a dynamic array uh, should be possible within GDB. Please raise bugs. Um, but then two days passed, and I sort of opened up the bugzilla, actually had to look into it, and when I looked at my... Uh, Git repository, I, I noticed something strange. Yeah. Apparently, I implemented this back in 2014. And he's like, really? Yeah. And somebody broke it? Which I said, no. I actually never committed it. Uh, yeah, well, I, I'd like to say I don't know what happened, but I know exactly what happened. You know, I, I turned up to, do, to Menlo Park in 2014. You know, uh, <laughs> I had two slides worth of changes, and one of the slides was the front page, and the second slide was any questions. And only then I actually realized maybe I'm a bit scant on material. And so now I was just typing away, you know, just getting anything to work just to put it in a slide and to talk about it. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, I, I've. Since then, uh, it's kind of gone in the pile of things that I got working quickly, but things that I didn't get working nicely. Um, and so it's kind of, uh, I need to sort of reopen that pile again and try to get it nice, just to uh, get a lot of those features that I promised actually into it. 
um, some of which them which uh, include uh, so uh, printing types uh, as you uh, program them in the D programming language itself. So you know, show module if it's a module, show u long rather than unsigned long, show vector. Um, finish off the grammar, even if uh, we don't support uh, everything in the grammar, just so long it's, as it's there so we can reject it uh, is enough and we can work on implementing the actual uh, operations of it later. Uh, likewise, anything that doesn't have an external dependency should be possible to actually uh, evaluate within GDB itself. Um, and sort of like a pipeline dream, uh, I really want to get a function called overloading working properly. And uh, I actually sort of discovered earlier this year that, uh, that they added uh, the ability to uh, dynamically inject uh, code into the, the debugger. Uh, they've had C support for quite some time. They recently added C++ support. Uh, you know, it would be quite nice to get that working the day where you just you know, open up your uh, program, inject code into the debug environment, and then just go on. But uh, I think that's just going to be a uh, near far future. Um, I, I just don't have the time for the moment, uh, which now then leads me on to the sort of the last small section of uh, projects that I'm associated with. Um, yeah, I don't really like talking about this. I don't know why. You know, it's, uh, it's because every single time I've come to do a talk at DCOM, you know, people always ask me the same question. You know. I could be doing a talk about something completely different, and they would still ask this question. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah. So, so I'd like to sort of, uh, ease you into that a little bit. So uh, I don't know, is uh, Matthias uh, Klump here in the audience at all? Or is, I'm not sure. I think he's German. I think he's based in Germany. But, uh, he's a guy who uh, looks after the uh, D packages in Debian. Uh, Notably, sort of AppStream generator. He's the author of that, and he's sort of uh, got some quite nice things to say about it. He said, "You know, th first of all, uh, thank you for your tremendous work on GDC. Uh, fellow developers and me were also pretty stunned by you maintaining quite a large amount of different GDC versions in parallel without a huge team. That's some impressive work." And yeah, I actually agree with that. Um, <laughs> but particularly two words, you know, pretty stunned. Um, I, I'm pretty stunned that I've been going for so long solo. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I don't know uh, what that really reflects on, on the wider community of things, uh, but you know, I, I cycle uh, almost sort of day in, day out. You know, it only takes one bus to uh, <laughs> uh, kill the project. And <laughs> that bus might be today. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He then goes on to say, so what is actually the main thing blocking uh, GDC's uh, GDC inclusion? Is it just manpower? It would be awesome if you would have a, to sum, a summary blog post uh, or similar to, to actually st the actual state of GDC itself. Um, also probably uh, attracting volunteers. Well, uh, shame isn't here, but um, yeah, if I sort of, you know, direct myself towards the camera. No. Matthias, how about I do a talk on it instead? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, brief history. Um, yeah. So, uh, D2 came about in, ooh, shit, sorry about the very small text, D2 came about in about 2007, uh, and it was maintained by uh, someone called David Friedman up until about uh, 2008 when he sort of dropped off the map. This is where you see the first uh, flat line right here. Um, then uh, some people came to sort of you know, give rebirth to the project, you got the first small bump. Um, and then another flat line. Uh, what's particularly interesting about that is, uh, and when you've got the first uh, sharp rise is when I joined the community. Um, the next flat line, it was when we had D2020. Uh, for those of you who remember, that was the first to introduce D runtime support, uh, which was a massive uh, shift. Uh, but once we got D runtime sorted, the rest just went skyrocketing, and we were pretty much uh, kept in sync for quite a number of years. But we've kind of sort of tailed off a little bit, and I want to sort of focus on the sort of the, the tailing off part and uh, what's really sort of changed to affect that. Um, 
So it kind of all started when uh, Walter sent me, uh, I think it was a, a first email followed by a Skype message, you know, saying that, you know, I've got some good news for you. you know, uh, Digital Mars has now uh, assigned your copyright to GDC for past, present, and future. Uh, this should open up uh, forward talks into it, and you know, very quickly I sort of opened up conversations with the community. Um, first submission attempt was sort of very abstract, you know, they didn't really look too much into it. Um, about a year later, I then did a sort of a second attempt uh, where it's sort of purely sort of technical. Um, and just sort of talk about the experience of that. So, positive, uh, in general, they sort of welcome any kind of contribution. Um, however, the, the biggest problem has been continued maintainership. They gave me a nice, uh, lots of links in terms of how a front end should look within GCC itself. Um, and they also suggested to follow the example of Go, which was merged recently at, at the time. Um, effectively, it's like, you know, be patient, persevere. Um, some of the negative things of it, um, well, uh, it was sort of very quickly sort of saying, you know, does D really require uh, its own caller convention? Um, I'm not sure we should really be supporting something that's non-standard. You know, also, does it really require naked support? You, know, uh, you appear to be duplicating some parts uh, in the front end to uh, GCC itself. You know, probably think about refactoring it. Um, also, all significant contributors uh, need to have papers filed with the Pro Software Foundation. Um, and unfortunately, at the time, the original author had been missing in action since 2007. Um, and, it'd be very, and it was very difficult actually trying to get him to uh, come up from the dead. But um, I don't want really to focus too much on the negative uh, aspects of it, uh, except I am. So, how do you actually test this? You know, you know, aren't you deliberately circumventing the, the build? You know, you're including poisoned headers. You know, there is no test suite. You know, have you actually tried against LT LTO? You know, I don't think we should really be including any front end that, ha that isn't working with LTO. Uh, your project directories are incorrectly structured. Uh, you seem to have a library in the front end. Why do you have Zlib there? You know, GCC has Zlib. You know, if it's out of date, update that. Um, many functions have no documentation for it. You don't even follow the GNU coding standards either. As for the front end, uh, you know, any significant contribution, you know, uh, any file that is more than 12 lines must come with a copyright notice. However, there's many files in the D source code that does not have this copyright notice. Will the development of D be uh, in GCC itself, or will it be external? If it's external, any changes must be copied verbatim into uh, GCC itself. However, this cannot be the case, because many files in the front end come with a notice that says otherwise. The license is GPL2, GCC is GPL3. You know, we need uh, this updated so that it explicitly says any later version may be used. What is this hack? You know, the entire front end just looked like one massive x86 specific uh, case. Um, why are there supports for prior GCC versions? Um, why do you have lots of additional macros? You know, uh, it, you know, version one, version two. You know, this should be like a, a dash STD script where it just switches at runtime. Um, you've got target-specific code littered all over the place. You're doing host-specific workarounds. We actually have a library to you know, provide you for all these host specific workarounds. If you've got a problem with it, you know, submit a patch to it. You know, uh, you're making very questionable changes to the middle end. You're making very questionable changes to the back end. You know, you're missing build hooks, and you've got compiler supports, which is for C front. C front. Other than that, looks good. When it's ready, we'll merge it in. So, <laughs> don't worry, you are knackered. <laughs> yeah. So we need a battle plan. Oops. You didn't see that. you down. Mm. 
So, we need a battle plan. So, first off, remove D1. Second off, remove any previous version of GCC um, that we supported in master itself. Only support trunk. This made things a lot, lot easier. Drop anything in the uh, compiler implementation that is tied to a specific target. So, bye-bye inline assembler, bye-bye decalling convention. Uh, also, try our hardest not to make any assumptions uh, based on the target. So, uh, for instance, you know, uh, do not ask the question, you know, uh, am I 64-bit Linux or OS X? Do ask the question, is this vector, point, uh, vector type actually supported by the back end? Uh, and finally, uh, we, we should really work towards having the front end so that it is shared uh, slash unmodified across all compiler uh, backends. Um, I think sort of, you know, trying to achieve this kind of uh, target was sort of really uh, my goal in mind before I actually go again uh, on another submission. Uh, so, you know, work was sort of going on towards that. You know, I addressed sort of many points. Uh, you know, copper right now, were very, very quick to sort of deal with. I introduced a target hook, which began removing many, many changes within uh, GDC at, uh, and the DMD front end itself. Um, and what made things a lot, lot easier was that uh, GCC also switched from being implemented in C to C++. So a lot of the hacks that I had to do were no longer needed anymore. Um, and we actually got very close to having a common uh, front end between us. Uh, but DMD had other ideas. So uh, Daniel, uh, he decided to remove all the glue interfaces and replace it with a, a visitor interface. Um, I actually received patches to actually, uh, this was a very s simple conversion, albeit monotonous for DMD, uh, for Daniel, um, and I actually received patches to actually do this within GDC itself, but um, I, yeah. I, I had a different idea in mind, to be honest. Um, to sort of give you a, a kind of idea, so uh, in the old interface, you, know, you have uh, glue style uh, methods, so, uh, generate a type, generate a symbol, generate an expression, put something that will go in the data segment, uh, walk over all statements, and uh, walk over all declarations. Um, this made sense in DMD itself because uh, each of these returned a different type. However, on GDC side, um, there's only one type that we represent things in GDC itself, and that is a tree. Um, and so a lot of it was just sort of type def to that. Um, and in the new interface, so again, where we sort of go in DMD side, you know, it's all very much, you know, a one-to-one -one conversion between the two. Whereas for me, uh, it was sort of, uh, you know, just sort of trying to take away each of these and very much sort of go from a ground-up perspective. So trying to make a very clean breakaway uh, from this interface and have something that's very, very clean um, and was able to remove a lot of the code uh, just to support it. Uh, so, for instance, uh, one of the nicest things was that uh, the uh, 2DT and 2LM uh, in DMD uh, for GDC itself, uh, you know, whether you generate an expression or whether you generate a constant that could go in the data segment, it's exactly the same thing. Um, and so it's sort of moving from one place to the other, um, and eventually I just collapsed the entire thing into the expression bit visitor. Uh, it sounds like 8,000 lines of code, gone. Uh, that's sort of yeah, um, made me very happy about. But deciding to do this, um, yeah, it, it was not a very straightforward change. It was quite painful at times and almost required a, a total rewrite of the internals. Um, you know, further on down the line, so August 2015, um, I'd already converted about half of the interfaces over. Um, but again, DMD had something different in mind. They decided to drop the C++ front end and switch to D. And, uh, well, th this makes perfect sense for DMD itself, and uh, to be honest, they really uh, should, should have done it a long time ago. Uh, but on my side, this really introduced a lot of uh, implementation regressions. Um, most have been solved, as I'm talking now, but uh, there's still many unknowns. Uh, 2016, um, because I've still got to make sort of some progress uh, in GDC itself, I got the uh, front end updated to 682. Um, we also got uh, Firewall SMD runtime shared as a, a built as a shared library, passing the unit tests and the test suite. 
and uh, the original author also uh, managed to sign his copyright finally last year in October. So we are now officially legally unblocked uh, for, for submission. And by December, I'd actually started pulling down all the scaffolding um, and finishing off the interface. Uh, which then comes to uh, DDMD itself. Now, DMD moves at a very fast pace in terms of development. And uh, I'm not sure if you saw find this without a seeing, you know, when do you actually test uh, new front ends of, of DMD? Is it after release or in the beta process? After release, OK, excellent. So uh, one of the massive problem uh, with the current way that things doing and why it's kind of really impossible to have a, like, a shared interface between us is because uh, changes get made during the development cycle of DMD, a release is made, then LDC or GDC looks at what's been changed and discovers regressions all the way through. Uh, so they're having to work out what's gone wrong, submit patches upstream, and then backport the patches locally. So it's never going to be common because we are always having to maintain local patches. Um, also, uh, upstream, I think of, yes, that's what I talked about. Oh, yes, that's why I put that in there. Also, uh, for the GDC side, um, a lot of the fixes in order to make a common front end um, have actually been done uh, in the upstream D implementation. So uh, Kai here did a CT float. Um, so I've had to, you know, uh, that's uh, written in D, but I'm still in C++ land. Um, and at some point, I need to think about switching to using the D front end um, implemented in D as well. Uh, but again, you know, there's probably been so many changes to the front end that affect the code gen passes um, that I can only realistically be maintaining two separate branches, one for the C++ version, one for the D version. As it's just myself, um, I really don't like the prospect of that, and I want to go for something different. Um, you know, I, I just can't you know, just sort of keep on going on this uh, cycle of you know, waiting for release, taking three months to uh, work out all the problems in that release, um, and then only to ha hit the same thing uh, another three months down the line. So what I need is a very stable target to actually base GDC on, uh, pun intended for those who know that the stable branch. So as of December, I sort of made it my uh, winter project to actually um, start moving myself closer towards uh, the stable branch in, in DMD itself. So first off, I sort of uh, synced with the last C++ version in during 2069 development, and then became uh, a small steady process of uh, getting all the headers in the stable branch, comparing it to the headers in uh, GDC's uh, 2068 tree, and anywhere that there was a, a deletion, work out what deleted that and backport that into GDC itself. Likewise, any additions, work out what changed, backport into GDC itself. Um, so as of now, you know, we sort of you know, backported fixes such as uh, external C++ struct or class. Uh, we've now fixed bugs 33 and 34. Um, we also support DIP25 and DIP1000. Um, whilst I'm at it, why not, why not just sort of open up the change log for DMD and anything that's marked as a regression, backport that as well. Um, and uh, I've got as far as uh, 2071.2, and likewise, I also updated Phobos to uh, 2071 as well. Uh, and as of uh, earlier this month, uh, last month, at the beginning of April, uh, finally the headers between uh, GDC and DMD stable are now actually in sync. Um, so that should provide uh, a nice base, uh, my idea being that uh, I should be able to switch between the D and C++ versions with hopefully very little change. So the current status, um, since April, I've now been in freeze mode for uh, documentation and refactoring, um, fixing the coding style once and for all, uh, documenting every single fun function uh, in GDC, uh, even when possible, referencing the D specification. Um, and grouping common uh, functions into uh, similar files. Uh, on GCC side, so uh, GCC version 8 
opened stage one, uh, which is the development uh, of GCC, on the 20th of April, and the release was uh, two days ago for GCC 7 itself. Um, and so it's kind of, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm mo much more happier than I've ever been uh, looking at GDC that I think it's probably time to uh, go for a submission again and I've already given the heads up uh, for, for the GCC developers that uh, this is what I intend to do sometime uh, over the next two weeks, uh, three weeks. Uh, while submission is happening though, um, again, just sort of working on extending the documentation, um, you know, saying what the built-ins module is, any compiler-specific extensions, predefined versions that we have, pick a time options. Um, also want to try to bundle in the Phobos library into the documentation, um, and maybe write a section on uh, interoperability with uh, C and C++. Uh, this will uh, hopefully all end up on the gcc.gnu.org site. And also I want to uh, build upon our platform and architecture support and uh, really get a proper uh, testing infrastructure in place. Um, in, I think in March I signed up to a, uh, a cloud hosting platform, uh, I think it's at Scaleway, and uh, a month later they sort of uh, sent me an email saying that, hey, you know, we've just added in uh, ARM v8 servers, so I'm pretty excited to sort of, you know, get one ordered um, and uh, start testing uh, GDC, uh, get it into the CI process. Um, if you want to borrow that, uh, can I, um, feel free to have it. Um, which really sort of comes to the last thing I want to talk about, uh, which is actually you know, how to port GDC to a new architecture. Now, uh, if I recall correctly, in LDC, you have various headers, don't you? Yeah, where you want to define AVI. But, uh, but, but before I get onto that, I just want to take any questions of, of anyone. Um, if anybody has any questions. Because I realize the time is getting on. Oh. One gentleman here. You always have a question. Uh, I'm just kind of curious, actually. What was the complaint about naked functions? Or, uh, so the complaint about naked functions, well, it's, that, uh, it's a feature that will have to be implemented in the uh, back end for x86. And the back end developers didn't really like the idea. Uh, I think they said something along the lines of, uh, why don't you just have a ASM expression um, outside the function body? This is valid C, uh, at least, or, is it, or it's a GCC extension of C. You can have ASM uh, expre uh, expressions um, outside a body and just have everything in there. Um, yeah, I, I sort of thought about that and said, nah. You know, um, and similarly for uh, inline assembler, because naked is a feature of inline assembler, um, you know, be, it, it just required you to just uh, understand how a x86 assembler works, whereas uh, GCC's uh, version of extended inline assembler, you just pass it a string. Um, it's, it's a bit like a printf. You, know, you, you pass it a string, add in some uh, format specifiers, and it just generates the uh, assembly for you. Um, if there's anything wrong with it, leave that for the assembler to deal with, uh, but just not to have it in the compiler itself. Um, yeah. And this kind of sort of went in the direction of uh, yeah, not having, not being tied to a, a specific architecture um, was really the, the end goal that I wanted to have in mind. No one else? Anything from the chat? I guess that's a wrap then. Can we oh. get a round of applause for mm -hmm. Ian? Well, I was going to give. The man who said he couldn't speak for well. an hour. <laughs> well, I haven't yet finished the last slide yet. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, recap. So in LDC itself, you, for, for each uh, target that you implement, you have to have a header to define the API for it. Okay. This is how you do it for GDC. Thank you. <laughs> no, really. 
you know, uh, as I've been saying, you know, just not being tied to a uh, specific target has really sort of opened up uh, the, uh, the ability to support many different platforms. In Debian alone, uh, you've got GDC compiler available for 18, architecture, uh, 18 different architectures on 12 distinctive uh, CPU types. Um, what's missing is the D runtime support and Phobos. So uh, in terms of porting, all you have to do is just get one of these compilers, see if you can build D runtime, and that's it. Um, the rest is just taken care for you. For you. So <laughs> anyway, I'm going to retire. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>